learned a lot about how the earth moves and directions and all sorts of things and people while they discovered this for themselves they love to move around they like to explore places and they like to give things names but when they built boats and traveled across the seas there weren't many places they could give names to the waves changed every day sometimes there weren't any stars because they were clouds how could they find their way better? Do you have any ideas? Well, people in Europe drew maps of their explorations. And on those maps, they named things. And so what they did is they drew lines across the map almost like a grid so that they could find spots even when there were no places to be named they're imaginary lines but they help us to get around and know exactly where we are see the shadow of my ruler it throws an imaginary line across the world this line is a line of longitude. This is a line of latitude. Here is a line of latitude. This specific one is the equator. It divides the Earth into two equal halves the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The lines of latitude are parallel lines. Here is a line of longitude. It connects the North and South Pole and is also called a meridian. that every line of longitude runs through the pole. They're not parallel. Each line actually divides the Earth into two equal halves. So how do we know which one we need to start measuring from? Well, around the time when all of this started developing and people started making these plans and finding these lines, England and France were in a war and England said that they wanted to run this prime meridian, this reference line to run through their Greenwich Observatory, which was a very special place to them. And France said it should run through Paris because at that time Paris was a very powerful city. And they argued over it for a while, but eventually the English won and so to this day the prime meridian runs through greenwich in england even though the observatory was later moved this prime meridian that runs through greenwich divides the earth into east and west not all lines of longitude have special names to keep them apart, people decided to measure the angle from the prime meridian. To measure the lines of latitude, we have to imagine we cut the Earth vertically in half. This, where we cut, that's the great circle.
Okay, so we've seen that people to the east of us see the sun earlier because the Earth rotates that way. And that this rotation is what gives us the times of day, like morning, night, midnight. Don't we have something that measures time? You're right, it's a clock. The clock helps us measure the time of day. Now, if it's 12 o'clock and lunchtime here where I am, then not every place in the world can have the same time of day. We saw that because the Earth rotates and sees the Sun at different times. That means they must have a different time on their clocks as well. If I were to travel from here, that's Namibia, to say Australia, they would be further ahead in the day than I am. So if I travel there, I have to change my clock to show the right time of day. Now Australia is far away. What about Mozambique? Mozambique is on the other side of Africa. That's not so far away. But they're still further ahead than I am. And if I go there, then I would have to change my clock all the time. Remember the lines of longitude that run from the poles across our world? Well, those we can also use to help us with the time difference. Have a look here. While every place has a slightly different time, we can't keep changing our clocks by the minute every time we travel east or west. So, people use the lines of longitude to divide the Earth into time zones. Because the Earth rotates east, places east of us see the sun earlier. They are ahead. Places to the west see the sun later. They are behind. The time zone that runs through the prime meridian is a universal time. If we go halfway around the world, we come to the international date line. Here, the date in the calendar changes. If we cross it eastward, we go back one day. If we cross it westward, we skip a day ahead. You need the colourful mini clocks for sure, but the black and white ones are optional. When you lay out the mini clocks, make sure that the long hand always shows to the top because we're working with a clock times. Start by finding the 12 o'clock in the universal time zone. Then continue matching the clocks by color and time. It's 11 o'clock where I am. start looking at how to actually find out what time it is in different parts of the world 
and let's quickly review what we've learned so far. We know that the Earth rotates east. We know that different parts of the world have different times of day, so they have different times on their clocks. To make it easier to deal with these time differences, people use the lines of longitude to divide the world into time zones, and each time zone is roughly one hour apart. Now, some countries choose to be in a time zone different to where they actually are because it just makes life a little bit easier, but that's why we have the time zone chart to see which place is in which time zone. When we go east, we go ahead in the day, so we have to add hours to our time, because people are in front of us. And if we go west, then we go back in the time of day and we have to subtract hours from our time. I am in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It is 12 o'clock on Friday. Brigitte is in Berlin, Germany. Let's make the time on our clock. Let's mark the locations on the map and zero the calculation strip to know how many hours we have to add. We have to find the plus 4 arrow and put it on the clock. Let's make the new time so we can find the right card and label. So it is 4 o'clock on Friday in Berlin, Germany. Let's use the control booklet to check if we are right. Let's try some more. Watch closely as I speed them up. Let's look at some subtraction examples. The process is the same. Watch closely. We have to be careful here. This one is at half past. <laughs> 